We begin with breaking news. Take a look at this. A pickup appears to be on fire on the interstate. That's I-94 East near the university exit. This is a live look from our Corwin Skycam. Moments ago, you could see flames shooting from that vehicle, and there appeared to be some sort of explosion. Now it looks like they're getting at least the flames under control. We do have a crew there at the scene working to put out the fire. This is a live look from our crew's camera. No information yet on what exactly happened, if anyone was hurt. We'll continue to follow this story for you and report on details throughout the evening right here on Valley News Live. We're just learning details of a wild story that involved a man walking almost 25 miles to the Dilworth Police Station and a family spending a night hiding in a cornfield. Dilworth Police say a man walked into their station this morning saying his family was being chased last night, so they spent the night hiding in a cornfield near Downer. Police sent out crews, including a canine unit and drones this morning, and found the mother and two children, all under age 10, all safe. The reason they ended up in that cornfield is under investigation. They thought somebody was chasing them. They were, they were paranoid that, that people were chasing with them or chasing them. We are still um, investigating that to see if that is actually true or not, or if that is uh, something that was just their paranoia. Um. Law enforcement say drug use is suspected, but they're working to confirm claims of a chase. So far, no charges have been filed. New for you at four, one man is dead after crashing his motorcycle into Lawrence Lake just west of Vergas today. A witness called 911 just before 1030 this morning after they saw the motorcycle drift over the center line and go into the lake. That person pulled the 70 year old motorcyclist out of the water, but they were unresponsive. Otter Tail, Vergas and Pelican crews provided life saving efforts. The man was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. The incident is under investigation, but officials believe the man may have suffered a medical emergency before the crash. A Canadian man, 39 year old Jason Berry, pleaded guilty today to conspiracy to distribute fentanyl and import it into the U.S. that resulted in 15 fatal overdoses. That investigation started in Grand Forks in 2015 after the overdose death of Bailey Hankey. According to court documents, Berry arranged the distribution while incarcerated in a Canadian prison. Berry faces a sentence of life in prison. 27 additional defendants were charged in federal court. Five of them were from Grand Forks. Well, it's a beautiful night in Fargo. You're looking live here at the Fargo Blues Festival going on through tomorrow at Newman Outdoor Field. 13 bands will take the stage. Let's go to Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson for a look at the weather they'll be up against. Hutch? Well, tonight it couldn't be any better. We have light winds and look at this. We are hundreds of miles away from any clouds with Thunder Bay You're seeing a few with some north winds there, but we have warmed up. The wind is light and conditions are favorable out to the west. The sizzle is back in Montana where we have 80s and low 90s at this hour. Now the 80s may have made their way back into the James River Valley in southeast North Dakota, but many of us are near 80 in the mid and upper 70s as forecast for today. The weekend's going to bring some change. We do have a chance for some Saturday thunder and Sunday we will have some scattered strong storms and some temperatures that'll be cooling off for a cooler start to the work week. We're going to go over the timing and location of the best chance of those showers and storms here in just a minute. But for now, we take a look at your forecast for Fargo. Temperatures sneaking down into the 70s, light winds from the south and expect 60s overnight. We'll have hour by hour details on that weekend planner so you can plan ahead coming up here in just a few minutes. All right, thanks Hutch. The judge's ruling delaying the closing of North Dakota's lone abortion clinic should provide more than enough time for the clinic to move to Moorhead. That's the latest from Red River Women's Clinic Director Tammy Cromanaker. She says she was prepared to open shop in Moorhead next week if the state's abortion ban had gone into effect yesterday. In the meantime, the Fargo Clinic will continue to see patients. Moorhead police are investigating a stabbing at a downtown park last night. Officers found a victim around 7 p.m. in Memorial Park who had a wound on their arm. Police say the two people involved know each other and no one's been arrested. Retired Clay County Sheriff Bill Bergquist passed away this morning with his family by his side. He'd been suffering from Alzheimer's and was recently placed on hospice care. After 16 years in Clay County, Sheriff Bergquist retired in January 2019. He'd spent more than 40 years in law enquest was 64 years old.
Democratic leaders say they're optimistic the House will pass a bill banning assault weapons for the first time in nearly three decades, but it'll most likely be a party line vote. Renewed interest in banning military style assault rifles comes after several back to back deadly mass shootings, including the one in Texas that took the lives of 19 elementary school students. The measure has the support of the Biden administration. Deborah Alfaron has the latest from Capitol Hill. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says the full House will vote today on an assault weapons ban. I'm excited today because for a long time now I have wanted to reinstate the assault weapon ban. It comes nearly two decades after the last assault weapons ban of 1994 expired. House Democrats have seized on the issue following a series of tragic mass shootings. We've turned our churches, our schools, our shopping centers, our entertainment venues, almost any place into a battleground. This bill would do little to prevent the mass shootings or the crime they're saying that it would. But Republicans have accused them of playing politics, especially since the bill is not expected to pass the evenly divided U.S. Senate. This is yet another attempt from the left to strip law-abiding citizens of their Second Amendment rights. House Democrats had hoped to link the assault weapons ban with other public safety bills, including funding for police. But Speaker Pelosi says those votes will take place mid-August. Overnight, the Congressional Black Caucus and a small group of House moderates reached an agreement on terms for the police funding measures, but they'll continue to negotiate until they can craft final legislation. We've been flooded with so many bills that people have, so we need to, shall we say, we have to have the bandwidth to deal with all of them. Speaker Pelosi says she's hopeful the House can also vote in August on the Senate Democrats reconciliation bill, which intends to fight inflation and lower prescription drug costs. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Earlier this week, the House Oversight Committee held an emotional hearing where executives, gun manufacturers said they should not be held responsible for recent mass shootings. Ahead of that hearing, committee Democrats released a memo showing that gun makers have made more than a billion dollars over the past decade from the sale of assault style weapons, in some cases marketed specifically to teens and young men. We have a developing story out of Washington. A Russian operative has been charged with using political groups in the U.S. to advance pro-Russia propaganda. One man is accused of giving money to organizations to create a political disturbance in the U.S. The case is part of a much broader Justice Department crackdown on foreign influence for a 2022 gubernatorial candidate and a 2016 presidential election. A bipartisan bill to boost microchip manufacturing in the U.S. is now headed to the president's desk for a signature. The $280 billion package is aimed at addressing supply chain snags exacerbated by the pandemic. Supporters call it a win for national security and your budget. Natalie Brand reports from Washington. It's a shortage that's impacted everything from cars to essential electronics. Sometimes we've had to scale back production because of uh, chips that were just frankly unavailable. In an effort to supercharge the nation's semiconductor industry, Congress passed a bill aimed at boosting chip production in the United States. And now it goes to the White House with the president's signature. The Chips and Science Act includes around $52 billion in subsidies for U.S. companies producing computer chips and $24 billion in tax credits for new manufacturing facilities as well as tens of billions of dollars to fund research and development. We will return America to world leader status in semiconductor production and power American science and research for generations to come. While the bill passed both the Senate and House with bipartisan support, Republicans were divided, with some saying it doesn't go far enough to prevent investment in China and calling it corporate welfare. I support making chips in the United States. But we cannot lead a new era of innovation through massive government subsidies. But supporters in the Biden administration say the bill is critical to compete with other countries and ultimately drive down prices. Natalie Brent, CBS News, Washington. President Biden says the bill will increase domestic manufacturing and lower costs for Americans and will make the U.S. less dependent on foreign sources of semiconductors.
Inflation surged in June and workers' average wages accelerated in the spring, signs that Americans won't likely feel any relief from rising prices anytime soon and that the Federal Reserve will keep raising interest rates. The inflation gauge tracked by the Fed jumped 6.8 percent from a year ago, the biggest jump in four decades. Much of the increase is driven by energy and food. President Biden touted the economy's strengths in a speech yesterday, while Americans' confidence in the economy is threatening Democrats and Congress in the run-up to the November midterms. Both Chairman Powell and many of the uh, um, uh, significant uh, banking personnel and economists say we're not in recession. The troubling report on the U.S. economy is raising new concerns about a recession. A recent poll shows more Americans believe we're already in a recession compared to two years ago when the pandemic sent the stock market crashing and layoffs surged. We're continuing to follow the breaking news out of I-94 East. Traffic still backed up on the interstate. It's crews work on the truck that burst into flames. This all happened just before 4 o'clock. Multiple vehicles are stopped near that vehicle on the interstate. We don't know yet how many others, if any, were involved. We've reached out to authorities for information on that fire and to see if anyone was hurt. We'll bring you the latest information as it comes in. It's a good idea, as always, to keep your VNL News app handy for breaking news right at your fingertips. You can follow stories like this one and receive the latest information and push alerts all for free. Just search VNL News in your app store.